This meeting is being recorded. Hi, this is Anne again with a quick anagram on how to use the Cloud9 debugger. I'm going to do this in the context of a specific assignment we have, uh, but I believe that it's useful for just sort of getting to know the debugger in general. It's a funny thing about debuggers. I've known several, two or three of them rather intimately, and every time I have to learn a new debugger, I get a, I get a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. Uh, there's just something intimidating and complicated about them. But I think the thing that you have to remember is um, a good debugger can, can be your best friend. And um, you usually only, it's a little bit like inspect with the browser, you usually end up having to only know two or three things. And if you can find those two or three things on the new debugger, probably you will be able to do 90% of anything you'd ever want to do with the debugger. They're complicated beasts, but they don't have to be complicated to use. So specifically, we, um, an assignment we have this week is to take this validate function, um, which validates phone numbers in a very simple-minded way, um, not, in a, not production quality validation at all. And the, and the task that you have is for each of these values in this input list of tests, you are supposed to identify exactly which conditional in the code uh, filters the false values out. So let me make that a little clearer. If I run this file, what happens is that I have a set of 13 tests to find. This is an automated test. And basically what it does is it takes each of these values, some of which don't look like, an, like a phone number at all, um, and some of them do look quite a bit like a phone number. And each of these values is run through the validate function. And there is an expectation list or an answer list where the first 11 of these are expected to be false. Uh, and only the last two values are expected to return true. And uh, the thing that we are supposed to be doing is figuring out which conditional in the validate code filters out the specific values. So for example, if you call validate with undefined, then it's relatively easy just desk checking to say, okay, if the value that comes through here is undefined, and I have to pass through a filter that says, I'm only going to go farther in this validation if the phone number is not undefined, then this is the conditional that is filtering out that specific value of phone number. And I've tried to clarify that a little bit, uh, what the exercise is about by doing a couple of these here. So for example, undefined is not, not undefined. The numeric value that is the second input, so notice this doesn't have quotes around it, so it's a numeric value. It comes down through here and desk checking, we can see that if we hand a numeric value down to validate, it passes the undefined filter, but it is not type of string, and so it is filtered out by this conditional. And as a hint to the person who has to fill in more of these, there are actually several values in a row, which even by inspection you can see don't happen to be strings. Um, I'm going to show you using the debugger on um, both the first one of these and a couple more. Um, and I need to show you one more trick first because this code is currently set up to run the whole array of inputs through the whole array of tests. And that's going to get um, just kind of unwieldy in the debugger. So what we really want to be able to do is right in here before the test values, we want to kind of short circuit. And we want to be able to call validate one value at a time and get a judgment. And let's just start with the first value in the list, which is undefined. Note that it's not in quotes. It's not the string undefined. It's the value undefined. And um, 
Oh, let's just log that. Now, if we were doing several of these, we'd print the value out, but we're only printing out, um, we're only doing one at a time. Okay. Now, the thing is, we want to be able to call validate once with just that line of code and then not run the automated tests. And I could certainly um, do a block comment and, um, and comment out everything that's below here. But I tried that and I'm finding that the colorization on these entries is actually helping me as I go through and I, and I work with them. So um, what I chose to do instead is there's a trick you can use if you ever want the code to just quit. And that is, and um, just to prove to you when we actually start writing this code that nothing happens after process exit, I'm going to console log after exit. And if I just run that much code, so I'm calling validate once with the value undefined, I should see this line printed out and I should not see this line printed out. So let's just give it a quick run. I don't think I have any breakpoint set. No. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we see that if you hand in undefined, it's an invalid phone number. So the judgment is false. That's the correct solution. And then we exit without ever printing this console log. So what I want to do is use this call to validate to walk the code in the debugger. And to do that, you need to do two things. One, you have to set a breakpoint, which you do by clicking over here in the left gutter. Okay, It looks a little bit like an error um, signal, but in fact it is, it doesn't have the red X in the middle. And that means it's just a breakpoint and you can get rid of it or you can, you can um, call it. And actually I think I will, well, the first time I'm going to set the breakpoint right there. Um, and what I was finding was you don't want the code running when you start the next instance with the debugger. So I'm going to close that. Um, I'm going to run it exactly the way I did the first time, but because there's a breakpoint, we will stop in the debugger as soon as we hit this line. Okay, and two or three things happen very quickly. This line is highlighted with a specific color, and this debugger uh, sidebar opens up. And you can see right away <laughs> that this debugger sidebar is looking pretty complicated. Um, and it, um, what you have to do is just take your heart in your hands and, and at the point where you need to be paying attention to things over here, know that you can find them. The first things you need to know are in any debugger, you're going to see a set of controls like this or there'll be a set of shortcut keys. So resume would simply make the code run as if the breakpoint had never been there and just finish. Um, the thing that you usually want to use in a debugger is called step over. And really that just means execute. In this case, we want to use this step into, which is not, um, which is actually a little bit rarer, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. But step into goes from where your line of code is into the function that's calling. So I'm going to click that, okay, and I find myself inside validate where the world is quite a bit simpler than out in the main script. And so in particular, let's move these guys over. Um, I have a series of variables which the engine knows about, and um, most of them are undefined because we haven't hit the lines of code yet that handle them. In this case, phone number is undefined because that's the value we passed down. And now I'm going to use my step over to, to execute one line of code at a time. So we're going to set is valid to false. 
and you can see that now is valid is not undefined. It has a value and that value is false. And now I'm just going to step over again and we're testing to see if phone number is not undefined. We're going to fail that test. When we fail that test, we pop down here to the return value. Okay. And then if we continue to step over, we come back here to where judgment, which is this value right here, has been set to false by the, by the function returning. And when I hit this resume, we're going to see the console log right there. So let's do one more um, value that you're going to need to do a um, say which conditional um, it fails. So let's put in true. Okay, the Boolean value true is not a valid phone number, and we're going to um, we're going to hope that that returns false, and we're going to try to figure out which conditional. It, it fails on. So what I'm going to do actually is move my breakpoint to right here. Uh, it's just a little simpler if I don't have to step into this function each time. And when I run, now we break on this point in the code. I can see that my phone number has the value true, is valid, has been set to false. If I step over this line, we pass that test because phone number is not undefined. And if I click this line, since phone number is a Boolean, I'm expecting that test to fail. Okay. And um, at this point, I can actually just, since I know is valid is false, I can just resume. And I know that in the exercise for this particular week that I've been assigned, that I take that conditional, and that's what I am supposed to put down here on this line. I'm supposed to be showing which conditional filters this particular false value out. So I'd like to do one more that's actually quite a bit more interesting, is I'm gonna take this value, this, the one that almost looks like a phone number but doesn't have four digits after the, um, after the dash, and I'm gonna put that in here. And this will be the last, whoop, hang on, this will be the last one we do. Control C. Okay, so I'm going to run this one more time. And I found this one pretty Interesting. It wasn't. It wasn't quite what I expected when I was running through the other code. So um, we're now inside validate. Phone number is this six-digit number. Oh, I chose the wrong one. Hang on. Let me stop this. Um, if you want to stop the code, what's that button do? Nope. Let's just uh, run it through, and let's get the one that I wanted to have. Yeah, this is the interesting one, the 673-121. Okay, because this one is seven digits. Okay, we're back in the debugger. We're back here. Phone number is not undefined, so we'd expect to pass that test. It's a string, so we're expecting to pass the next test. And it has a length of seven digits, okay? And then in this code, we would expect to fail this test uh, because this dash in the middle, um, although that can be a minus sign, it's certainly not a minus sign in the middle. So here I'm expecting this to pop out if I step over, yep, I return is valid from there. So just to review, when you have a breakpoint and the code hits that breakpoint, this complicated window opens up.
And all I can say is that for your use right now, you want to be looking at this variable section and what values are being um, assigned here. And you want to know that this is resume, just run to the end. This is step over, which means execute this line. And then occasionally, but I don't think very often, you would need to step into a function. Give it a shot. It's not nearly as hard as you would expect. Um, and the debugger in the browser works almost the same way. It's just that it looks a little more complicated. That's it for now.